Hi guys, uh, Patrick here with goldkilns.us. Gold wow. Anyway, today we're going to do uh, the cupelling process. We're actually going to turn lead into gold. And uh, actually, in all reality, I think that's where a lot of that philosopher's stone uh, legend comes from. This is our little lead prill from yesterday. And I'm going to take it over on the anvil and beat it up into a square before we do this. But anyway, I thought I'd show you what we use here. Um, this is a modified version of the KK6 set up for cupelling. I've got some wind blocks here to keep the wind from blowing in here while we do this, while we cupel this off. And the way the little KK6 works is that we take our our Maybar cupel and we'll have the furnace going and we'll center it as so. And then once we have it in there we put our lead prill in like this. And then the flame is traveling up along the outside of this ring and is traveling up. And if you don't have this little ring here on there, what happens is the flame travels up and it prevents the atmospheric oxygen from traveling down into the middle of the cupel to allow the metallic lead, once it's burning and once the cupel is opened up, to convert to litharge and be absorbed by this cupel. So what we have is we have a beveled ring that we put on there. And what happens is that the flame comes up and then it follows this bevel and it opens the flame up like a flower. So you have a hollow spot in the middle of the flame. And then the atmospheric oxygen can come down, contact the burning pool of lead, convert it from a metallic lead to a litharge, which gets absorbed by the cube. Okay guys, I'm back. Got the furnace lit, it's warmed up. I've had that cupel sitting up there starting to get warmed up a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick the cupel up if I can get balanced. Here's our lead prill after I pounded on it with a hammer. It's pretty square, it's close enough. I got the flux off, that's what's important. Pull the lid off. Pull this ring off. And I'm going to set this in the middle. That looks pretty good. I'm going to let it warm up a little bit before I put the ring back on and the lid. Those cupels, uh, they use a magnesite, they don't crack as bad as the bone ash, but they still crack, so you, you want to give them every opportunity to warm up, try and get them heated up evenly before you really get after it. And this whole process here is going to take about 30 minutes. So what I'll do is there's quite a bit of heat coming off here. I'm going to go ahead and stay with you here until the cupel opens up and it starts to burn and then I'll shut the camera off and move it out of the way, put my respirator back on and watch it until it's ready to go off the end. Then I'll set the camera back up and let you watch the final little deal. set the ring on there. I don't know if you can see it, but the flame's swirling around here. And it's swirling around on the outside of this bevel. And there's a big hollow spot right here where my tongs are. And that's where the atmospheric oxygen will come down, contact the burning pool of lead. And then once it contacts the burning pool of lead, it will oxidize the lead from a metallic state back into a litharge state. It's 
So let's go ahead and put our lead krill in the middle there. And then let's put the lead on it. And we'll just let it go here a little bit until I see that that piece of lead is melted and that uh, maybe the cupel will open up. You gotta wait for a while for the cupel to get hot enough. Yeah, it's a pretty good sized cupel, so it takes a little while. Once those cupels, what they do is they call them opening. The top of the burning pool of lead opens up and all of the, oh, if there's any slag or any contaminants, rolls to the edge of that burning pool of lead. And then the atmospheric oxygen, as it contacts the burning pool of lead, converts it to litharge and the cupel starts to absorb it. And it's kind of in a humpy position. Once that process starts, it generates a lot of its own heat by an exothermic reaction. And so if you, if you start to open the cupel up, and if it doesn't remain hot enough, it's what they call frozen. The surface freezes again. And then once the surface freezes, because it cools off enough to where it becomes solid instead of a liquid burning pool of lead, then it gets, they call it a frozen cupel, and you either put the lid back on and get it to go again, or sometimes it freezes hard enough you can't get it going again. So, cupelling is kind of a tricky little thing to do, but once you get used to it, once you learn about it, it's not too awful bad. And right now, our pool of lead is melted and I can see some of the crust on top of it right now but the cupel has opened up in other words it's a lot hotter than it is the melting point of the lead but it's not hot enough to where it started to convert the metallic lead to litharge and generate the exothermic heat yet so I gotta wait and what I'll do I'll go ahead and stop the camera and I'll wait. It'll probably take 10 or 15 minutes for that cupel, maybe 10 minutes or so for that cupel to get hot enough to start the process. So I'll go ahead and pause this thing and then once it's opened up, I'll pull the lid off of there, then you can see it burning and what the burning pool of lead looks like and the conversion from metallic lead to litharge. Hang on. Hi guys, I'm back. Okay, a little more, a little more wind showed up, so I put another little set of blocks up there. But flame shows up better anyway. So you can see how that flame is just coming out of that little hole, and it's basically there's it just kind of basically just a jet of flame coming out of there. And that small hole is not beveled. There's no way for atmospheric oxygen to get back into there. So, when I pull the lid off, you're going to see the flame open up and become a larger flame. And you should see that burning pool of lead that's in there start to convert to a litharge. It gets kind of an oily looking surface on it. It kind of rolls around. And when I first pull it off there, i got to make sure it doesn't freeze. So I may have to put the lid back on. But we'll look and we'll see how it's going. kind of wave my hand a little bit and once that flame opens up the atmospheric oxygen gets down there to it and it, it'll convert that burning pool of lead to a litharge. Right now I got just a little bit of wind screwing with me. Let's see if I can block it off a little better by doing that. There, there we go. Now you can see that flame opening up 
just like that. When the flame opens up, you can see the, the, the surface of the cupel, and you can see the oily looking surface on there. And what's going on is that's being converted from a metallic lead to a litharge and is being absorbed by the cupel. The exothermic reaction has taken place. The outside of the cupel is a little cooler than the center of the cupel, as you can tell by the heat. And it's just, it, the flame's opening up, the wind's screwing with me a little bit, but the process is working better here. Maybe I can move this a little more. That helped a little bit. So if the flame, if the wind wasn't blowing, that flame would be hanging just right straight up in the air and allowing that atmospheric oxygen to come right back down to the center. And it's working good right now. The cupel is staying open. It's converting off the litharge and the cupel is absorbing it. There's a little ring around the outside of it. And as this thing shrinks down, you'll see the staining on the side of the cupel. So the thing to do right now, is there's quite a bit of heat coming off of there. I think we'll just back off a little bit, let it work. I might set up a piece of plywood outside there a little bit to try and block a little more of that wind. But when we get down to the final little last stages, I'll get the camera going again and watch it go from when it blinks and becomes our goal B. Hang on, I'll get back to you.
I'm back. Um, I was holding that camera up when I had my respirator on, so I couldn't say a whole heck of a lot. And I was hoping we could catch it right when the last little bit of litharge went off, but man, that camera got really hot as close as I had it. So I shut everything down and I got the, the furnace off. It's still damn hot in there, but let's see if I can get fairly close. Sitting in the middle of that cupel is a bead, and that bead is gold. So we were successful in everything that we've done. And let's see. I have a lot of heat coming off there. I'll see if I can get in a little closer. You can start to see it changing color right now. It's going from red to a gold color. So what I'll do is I'll let that cool down. Yeah, I'll set this camera back on the stand here. I'll let that cool down, and then once it cools down, I'll pull that cupel out, and we'll take a look at our little bead, and quit banging into the camera, it helped too. So, anyhow, looks like we're successful in everything that we've done. That's a pretty good sized bead, I don't know how much it weighs, but we will find all of that out shortly. So, I'll let that cool down slow, um, and you'll be able to see the litharge as where it absorbed into the cupel. Um, if you look around the top of this, let's see, I'll pick this thing up again. If you look around the top of the ring there, you'll see how it's black and how it's opened up. And I'll try and get you one more close little shot on that little gold bead there, bottom of that furnace on that cupel still really hot so I'll back off let everything cool down I'll fish that cupel out of there and we'll take a look at how we did but from what I see right now I'm pretty pleased hang on I'll get back to you hi okay. guys uh, I'm back um, <laughs> uh, there's something I wanted, I wanted to show you here. I, uh, I'll grab this camera here on the pedestal on the stand. Anyway, I moved a little kiln and sitting in the bottom of this cupel right here is a big old bee of gold. And there's the lid and everything. And what I wanted to show you is there's piece of OSB that I was set up on I had to that insulation there and everything and I noticed it started smelling pretty bad I wasn't too awful worried about it I went ahead and went through it and so at any rate guys if you're gonna mess with these things uh, the best thing would have been to take this and put uh, those little one foot square paver things that you can buy at Home Depot or whatever and set them on top of the OSB and then put something else over the top of that. So, anyway, there we are. You can see where the lith arch has pulled up the edges and where it's absorbed into the cupel. And no, I'm not going to touch that cupel because it's still way too hot to finger. So, hang on, I'll quit banging this around here in a minute. Like I said, it's going to be a nice day here in Arizona today. Not quite as hot, only about 100 today. Nice day. So, I'm going to let that cupel cool off a little more. I'll set things back up in the garage. I'm going to pick up my mess out here. And then we'll pull that little bead out of there. Let me get a close-up shot of it. I'll yak at you a little more. And we'll close this out. Hang on, I'll get back to you. Hey guys, I'm back. Well, we're in the garage now. And, uh, 
Looks like we did it. Looks like we turned lead into gold. Does that make us alchemists? I don't know. That uh, cupel is still hot. Still too hot to hold on to by hand. Let's see. I'll hold this up here. And there's our little gold beads sitting in the bottom of it. Not little. Pretty good size. And you can see where the lith arch, the yellow colored material was absorbed by the cupel and now we got a now we got a piece of gold sitting in the bottom of it so um yeah it's still warm let's see if i can get that little bead out of there sometimes they stick pretty hard which is what that one has done let me find a tool Okay, now let's see if I can get that off. There's a going to the doctor. Yeah, there we go. So here's our little gold bead. It's frosted on the top because when this stuff blicks off or whatever, uh, the the cupel is actually lower than the temperature that gold melts at. So when all the lead is converted to litharge and gets absorbed by the cupel it leaves kind of a frosty appearance on your beads of course i'll flux that and remelt it and make it add it to the other ones let's see i'll turn on the scale here and i'll see how much this weighs Wow. 3.1 grams. Which is pretty darn good to come out of 30 grams of this rock after we've done all of the steps. So, I'm kind of a stickler. I always like to find out what was going on with my my. Uh, fire my fusion process uh, we added enough flour to precipitate actually about 30.8 gram prill I'm gonna call it 31 our prill weighed 40 and a half grams after I beat it up so um, looks like we ended up with get my calculator going I don't do anything with my mind uh, 40.5 minus 3.1 equals minus 31 equals 6.4. So we had 6.4 grams larger prill than what we wanted to with our carbon addition. You know, I'm just satisfied as heck with it. So, there we go. The real deal. That's how it's done. Long process. But, it's fun. Appreciate you watching. And, anytime that you take some ore into a fire assay guy and he says he wants 50 bucks to do a fire assay, I wouldn't bitch. Anyway, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. I'm probably going to do one of these with the microwave instead of the KK8 just for the heck of it. In the meantime, hang on. I'll get back to you.